an explosive start to the 2018 season. Fort Clarkstown South. Yorktown last year experienced the same. This year, the Vikings are looking to perhaps capture a Section 1 title themselves. This is the News 12 Varsity Game of the Week. A Section 1 showdown as the Huskers of Yorktown take on the Clarkstown South Vikings. Hello again, everyone. Lou Brogno with you on the call alongside David Resnick, and we welcome you to Clarkstown South High School. Yorktown and Clarkstown South, David, two teams that haven't met in quite some time. As we mentioned, Yorktown, the defending Section 1 champions, and Clarkstown South off to an exhilarating start, undefeated at 5-0, averaging over 40 points per game. This time last year, Clarkstown South was a double-A contender. Yorktown was on its way to a perfect Section 1 season and their first section title in almost two decades. Now, as we bring you to the present moment, Clarkstown South is an A school. New York State reclassified. So this double A team that was on the rise is now in the mix in a very deep and talented A field. And the Vikings have really taken the momentum that they've built over the last couple of years. They have brought that into their class A play. They had a big test on the road earlier this season against Rye, a perennial class A power. They passed it with flying colors. Another major test today against Yorktown, a team that has lost their last two games, but has the experience and the championship pedigree and the desire to get back on the winning track tonight. Oh, David, you mentioned that championship pedigree and experience, and that's certainly what they have at the quarterback position. Senior Tommy Weaver, this year, over 1,000 yards of total offense. Last year, over 1,400 yards of total offense. Yorktown graduated 27 seniors, many of them key pos skill position players that surrounded Tommy Weaver last year as a junior. This season as a senior, a two-year quarterback, he's obviously leading the offense as a signal caller. He's the team's leading rusher, and he also just knows how to lead the team. Coach Mike Rosigno talking about his leadership, the way that he really is the guy for this group, and that has really shown in his senior year as a quarterback. On the other side for Clarkstown South, they feature one of the most explosive, exciting offensive players in Section 1 in senior R.J. Lamar. A big junior year has been backed up by an even more impressive senior campaign. R.J. Lamar is listed as a wide receiver, but he is so much more than that. They'll use him as a wideout. They'll put him in motion, use him in the jet sweep game. He'll also contribute on special teams. Mike Scarpelli devises specific ways to get Lamar the ball in space, in positions where he can use his explosive athleticism and ability to find pay dirt. So a big challenge for both teams, Yorktown and Clarkstown South, big section one battle. And the opening kickoff is coming up shortly here on News 12 Varsity's Game of the Week. Welcome back to Clarkstown South on this beautiful October evening. Yorktown getting ready to take on the Vikings. And, of course, the third member of our broadcast team, as always, is Amanda Puglisi, and she's down on the sidelines. Amanda? Well, Lou, because of the classes and the way that it's gone the last 10-plus years, it's been a very long time since Clark Sound South and Yorktown met. Actually, it was 2004 right here on this field, and it wasn't even a turf. It was a grass field, and Coach Scarpelli remembers that day very well. He says it was the last year that Ron Santovic was at Yorktown, of course, following that next year. Coach Rosigno took over, but Coach Scarpelli recalls that game. He said it was a rebuilding year for Clark Sound South. They were barely 500. They were just trying to get to that mark. Yorktown was already there. So he says whenever he thinks back of Yorktown, he always remembers that 2004 season. But he, now that Clark Sound South is back in A, they're looking to make some noise this year. Well, as we mentioned, interesting matchup tonight. Clarkstown South has been really clicking on all cylinders, David. 5-0, and oh, but... As we said, they're averaging over 40 points per game. They really have been electrifying on offense. They really have been, and a big reason for that is their two-year 
starting quarterback Drew Talevi, who's surrounded by a number of players with experience. I think R.J. Lamar rightly so gets a lot of the headlines for his production, for his big playability. But when you look at the skill positions for Clarkstown South, in particular their starters, you're looking at familiar names, players that have made impact on the varsity level and a number of options that you feel comfortable with. And so when you can go to a number of different options, when you split out four wide and as a defense, you have to feel like you've got to cover each of those options equally. That's a big reason why Clarkstown South has been so explosive offensively to this point. Good crowd on hand tonight at Clarkstown South. As we said, it is a gorgeous evening for this game between the Huskers and the Vikings. And we should mention you see the Huskers warming up on the field there. Usually when we come out of Amanda's report prior to the game, we're ready for the opening kickoff. But not tonight because uh, Yorktown, although the team bus got here in plenty of time, the equipment bus was delayed. A lot of traffic in the Hudson Valley uh, this afternoon. And thus we will have a delay to the opening kickoff. So uh, it'll be uh, a few minutes before we tee it up. But uh, they, that gives the big crowd uh, more of an opportunity to settle into their seats. You know, typically it's a late arriving crowd no matter where you are. <laughs> and so now you could feel good that when you come at your normal time, you're actually early. Maybe I'm just talking about myself. <laughs> I'm, n I'm not sure. But um, it's definitely a little wrinkle into this week six final regular season night for Clarkstown South is they look to remain defeated. They've been settled in. They were out on the field an hour prior going through their normal routine. For Yorktown, things uh, a bit different in terms of the traffic and the equipment not getting to the facility as quickly as the team. But uh, we'll get this all sorted out. And while the teams aren't ready for kickoff, we seem to be. So we'll... Um, you know, I asked you uh, pregame how your uh, tap dancing was, <laughs> and uh, we might have to find out, Lou. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure we'll be just fine. <laughs> uh, but uh, as we said, uh, we've, we've got a few minutes before we get to the kickoff. So in the meantime, uh, we'll take a timeout here at Clarkstown South as we get ready for tonight's game. Yorktown, Clarkstown South, coming up shortly here on News 12 Varsity's Game of the Week. Clarkstown South heading to the sideline as uh, they get ready for tonight's game against Yorktown. Vikings coming in undefeated at 5-0 and oh, and Yorktown 3-2. and two. But David, Yorktown comes off one of their greatest seasons really in program history last year. Section 1 champions and uh, got all the way to the state final. It was a tremendous year for the Huskers. It was their fifth title in school history in the state tournament era. But their first since 1998. And what was so interesting for Mike Resigno and Yorktown, 2017 marked the third time in four years in which the Huskers were undefeated heading into the section final. In 2014, they lost to a Andrew Livingston-led Garnet squad in 2016. Who could forget? Horn and Pyrus. And then finally breaking through in 2017, the Huskers and Mike Resigno getting that elusive section title. They are the defending champs, but if the championship was right now, Clarkstown South, I believe, is the favorite. Well, last, last year getting to the state final, losing to West Seneca West 14 to six. As you mentioned, their first appearance in that final 23 years. They finished 12 and one last year. And for Clarkstown South, their head coach, Mike Scarpelli, has done a tremendous job with this program. In his 17th season, a Clarkstown South graduate, he's got them undefeated. They have put up some big numbers this year. Beat Tappan Zee in the season opener 61-22. to Upended Spring Valley 39-13. They put up 45 points against Nyack and then 49 against Rye. So it has been... <laughs> An explosive here and then of course the big game where they beat Clarkstown North their crosstown rivals if you will 28 to 7 winning their third straight supervisors cup they've been tremendous in that rivalry winning all but one since 2010 
And what's interesting for Clarkstown South this year, going from double A to A, not because of their level of play, but just simply because of the number of students enrolled. It's strict, the classifications is strictly based off of size, and they reclassified the five divisions, is that instead of playing a North Rockland or a Suffern or a Ramapo, Clarkstown North and Spring Valley actually moved down with Clarkstown South from double A to A, but then you have a school like Nyack, a team that's won state championships before in class A, a Tappan Z, a Dutchman squad that's typically been A. So Clarkstown South, the opportunity to still play the Rockland County rivals, but a different flavor this year in the schedule and continuing that idea, a team from Westchester and Yorktown, a squad that up until 2011 was a double A school. And they've gone back and forth between A and double A through the classifications as Yorktown school size has varied over the last two decades. So it's, um, it's a matchup that could have happened a long time ago. It hasn't happened in a while since 2004. And on this final regular season game, Clarkstown South in line to host a qualifying round in the playoffs, announcing the seniors on what appears to be a nice homecoming evening. So the seniors are being introduced to the crowd now prior to the game. Yeah, the Vikings. Let's check in with Amanda. Well, as we're seeing the Clarkstown South, as they're announcing their starters, we saw number 23, Jack Tuchek. And before I had the chance to talk to his older brother, Frank, of course, if you're a Section 1 football fan, you know Frank and all the accolades he received. He graduated from Clarkstown South in 2012, and he said he wanted to come back last year to coach his brother and to coach some of his brother's friends because they've all grown up together. And Frank said, of course, when last year when Jack went down with the broken collar blow, and he said he was so sad. He was already committed to Clark Sound South, so he stayed on to coach, but he said this year has really been something special to be able to share his brother's year with him, to coach up the guys, coach up the players. He said this is a really, really special team, and Frank told me he is so glad to be back with the Vikings. Yeah, it's a great story. Amanda Frank, a one-time Rockland County Player of the Year, and of course Jack last year missed with that broken collarbone, he has come back brilliantly here for his senior season. It's amazing to think how good Clarkstown South was without the services of Jack Tuchek, a team that went seven and three and lost to New Rochelle in the section one class AA final. You bring back Tuchek into the mix with all of the other veterans. Tuchek was a player that saw time as a sophomore. He was expected to be a major player as a junior for the Vikings. It's great for Clarkstown South that he's been reintroduced into the lineup this season. Right now, a moment of silence here at Clarkstown South.
Well, a nice job by the Clarkstown South Viking marching band as they play our national anthem. And we are just about ready to go. The captain's getting ready to meet at midfield. And there is the head coach of the Huskers, Mike Resigno. At David, Yorktown won the first three games of the season against Panis, Lakeland, and Hendrick Hudson. So they got off to a 3-0 start after winning that Section 1 title a year ago. But now they've lost their last two. So they're trying to right the ship here against a very tough opponent. And a big game for Yorktown when it comes to the playoffs and seedings. With a win, I think you could pretty much guarantee that Yorktown would be hosting a qualifying round game. Would they be in the mix to host a quarterfinal round game? Very possible for Clarkstown South. They're playing for the number one seed today. Absolutely, and there's Mike Scarpelli. As we said, in his 17th season, he's a Viking through and through, a Clarkstown South graduate, and he's looking to propel his team to a 6-0 and start. And the question tonight really is the Yorktown defense, can they handle this explosive Clarkstown South offense, which has really put up points at will at some points in the first five games of the season. If you want to say four touchdowns is an offense being slowed down, then the Vikings were slowed down last week against Clarkstown North in the Supervisors Cup, a game in which the Vikings won for the third straight year. They're 16-5 and five in the last 21 in that matchup, but rivalry games tend to make things a bit slower. It was 14-7 in the second half before the Vikings pulled away and won. Well, Yorktown won the toss, but they have deferred. And so Clarkstown South will get the football first. And we're glad you could join us on this uh, beautiful October Friday evening. Perfect weather for this big game between the Vikings and the Huskers. And a very good crowd on hand. Of course, the Clarkstown South faithful here, but Yorktown brought down a nice contingent as well. And I'm sure many uh, still on the Mario Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just happy I'm not one of them. <laughs> York Dad will be in their road white trimmed with green. And they will kick right to left on your screen. And the Vikings in their home gold with the gold helmets and gray pants. Clarkstown South, always one of the more unusual color combinations, the brown and gold. R.J. Lamar goes back deep to receive the kick, and he is worth paying attention to. Had a 50-yard kickoff return against Clarkstown North. He had a 94-yard kickoff return versus Nyack earlier this season. He is explosive and electrifying. You got, get the feeling, I'm sure, that Yorktown will try to keep the ball away from him. John Tom also back there, and on the kickoff return, it comes up across the 35 to the 36. Mike Iodice on the return for the Vikings. And their quarterback is Drew Talibi, senior 6'1", 185. And last week against Clarkstown North, he was 14 of 21, 243 yards and three touchdown passes. They gave the ball to R.J. Lamar, first touch last game. Will they go there again? Here's a double reverse as they give it to Lamar. He gets outside, hits the corner and picks up what appears to be first down yardage for the Vikings. So right away, Clarkstown South goes into the playbook. Lamar lined up as a wide receiver, comes on the reverse as Iodice gave him the handoff. After last week's game, he said he loves how his coach singled him out to give him the ball to start. Handoff goes up the middle. Kyle Walker on the carry, junior running back. He's got good size, 5'11", 240. <laughs> More Lines, than good size. Lines up in that fullback position. He is, 
Your good old-fashioned fullback. Got to love it. And a good old-fashioned three-technique defensive tackle. He's a load. <laughs> Big hole getting outside and turning the corner. Down the sideline, finally brought down at the 20. It's John Tom on the carry. So Tom picks up big yardage. Tom coming off of a couple of touchdown performance. Big hole at the point of attack for Clarkstown South. Something that stood out on film for Mike Resigno, the Yorktown head coach, the size and physicality. So far, the Vikings are having their way in the run game. Jack Tuchek goes wide to the left, handoff goes to Tom. He cuts it in and is brought down after a short pickup. Alex D. Benedictus in on the tackle for the Huskers. Tommy Weaver helping as well with the flag down. The officials talking to the Yorktown captain, so this one probably against the Vikings. And it is against Clarkstown South. So that will push them back. It's a block in the back there against the Vikings. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And this Vikings squad so far in the run game is, is rolling between Walker and Tom and Lamar in the jet sweep game and also the reverse game as well. And a give again up the middle to the fullback, Kyle Walker. And he busts inside the 25-yard line. Picks up some of that yardage, gets it back. It'll bring up a second down. Second down at about 13. Some movement on the line, and now a flag is thrown. And the Huskers might have jumped on the line of scrimmage. Encroachment is called against the Huskers. So five of those 10 yards that Clarkstown South lost on the block in the back picked up there on second down because of the penalty against Yorktown. So now second and nine, and Talibi throws outside. Catch made by Lamar, and he's hemmed in. So a good job by Yorktown that time as they did not allow big yardage on that reception. Nick Campanaro in on the tackle for the Huskers. Keith Boyer there as well, and a terrific job to swarm to the ball. Remember, defensively, as you're being spread out, the first guy's got to make the stop before he can get help. Quick snap to Talibi. He did not expect that snap. The ball was snapped early, and he's crushed behind the line of scrimmage. Seemed right away that Matt Dottie claimed responsibility Talibi wasn't watching. Good job by Dottie to at least be on target so that when it <laughs> caught him off guard in the breadbasket, it was collected right away. That is a positive outlook on that play. Oh, <laughs> my glass is overflowing right now. Uh, Gideon Kabat is in to kick. A field goal is blocked. A big play by John Bowen, who comes in and blocks the field goal. Defense bends, but it does not break. It stiffened uh, when it got a penalty in its favor. And then it made the nice open field play on the screen to Lamar. And then John Bowen coming right through the middle Gideon Kabat, second year as the place kicker, really strong ability and just a lot of pressure. Boyer in the area as well as they look to swarm the field goal attempt. So Yorktown with a big special teams play. And Tommy Weaver brings the Huskers up. He hands it off, big hole for Keith Boyer, who carries the ball up to the 40-yard line. Boyer, just a sophomore, but he's had a nice season, 24 carries, 298 yards, three touchdowns. He's averaging over 11 yards per carry. Another Boyer in Husker green and white, his older brother, Jose, a two-year starting quarterback who got the Huskers to the section final game. Pick up a four, and this time Weaver keeps it himself, hits the corner, and picks up good yardage up across the 45-yard line. So Tommy Weaver, a quarterback who can not only throw the football, but run as well. 
He's got 45 carries on the year, over 480 yards. He averages over 10 yards per carry. Nearly 500 yards of offense last week for Weaver in the loss to Lords. And he keeps it himself again as he reads the defense and takes it up the middle into Clarkstown South Territory, brought down at the 45. What makes Yorktown's offense so difficult to plan for and play against is how multiple they are. Very rarely will they go to the same formation, but they use the same personnel, so they break the huddle if they huddle, and you're not quite sure initially how they're gonna line up. And off the Boyer, this time he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage as Tom comes in to make the play. Beautiful read there by John Tom. And he blows that play up. Tom, a two-year starter who played defensive end, dropping back to outside linebacker, has the quickness and the smarts to read it. Just blows up that tackle attempted by Matteo Cermelli. And that's a big loss on the play. Brings up a throwing situation for Tommy Weaver in Yorktown. Third down and about eight for the Huskers. 7.45 remaining first quarter. No score between Yorktown and Clarkstown South. Weaver back to throw has plenty of time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Rolls right, fires down the field, incomplete. So it'll bring up a fourth down. And Yorktown's drive comes to an end. Nayim Sinanai, the tight end go-to receiver was the choice there for Weaver. Sananai lined up in the left slot in a shallow cross and they tried to improvise but just couldn't connect and Weaver just overthrew his favorite target. Would have been enough for a first down. So the Huskers will kick it away. And Campanero on the run, kind of a rugby style kick. Penalty flag on the play as well. And Campanero kicks it out of bounds. Legal procedure against Yorktown, and that penalty is declined. So Clarkstown South will take over with good field position. 7-28 remaining in the first to score, Vikings and Huskers. Clarkstown South looking to go 6-0, and remain undefeated after dropping down to Class A this season. Trip receivers go to the left side for the Vikings. They swing it out to Tom. He makes the catch, has a couple blockers in front. Beautiful stiff arm, and he gets up across the 40-yard line. John Tom has been featured quite a bit here early on by the Vikings. Open field Tom, help from two check on the block, but then also just the physicality overpowering Tommy Weaver, who not only plays quarterback, but is a leader on defense at his cornerback spot. Second and four, and they throw it out to Lamar, who gets the edge. And he picks up a Viking first down up across midfield into Yorktown territory. You're starting to see why Clarkstown South is so explosive offensively. One side for Tom, explosiveness, physicality. The other side for Lamar and his athleticism and size and his ability to move the chains. And a throw over the middle, it's caught. Beautiful execution that time by the Vikings as they throw over the middle to Lamar. And just when you think you have to guard the perimeters, you go play fake to a bull of a running back, or that was Tom, excuse me, and then a little pop pass over the middle just when you thought maybe Lamar couldn't be seen over the middle or only was an edge perimeter player. First and 10 for the Vikings, flipped outside, catch made on the corner. And another good pickup on a first down play, Joey Zingaro on the reception. And again, it's more than just Tom. It's more than just Lamar. Zingaro and Tuchek 
and Iodice complete that receiver core. And just when you start to cheat on one player or another, there are many that can beat you. Lamar gets the handoff this time, trying to get outside. It's strung out nicely by Yorktown. Good job there as Campanero got over there to string that play out. Weaver was there also on the edge. That's who you see there, five and white. Just plays so hard on both sides of the ball, already feeling the pressure of going up against this Clarkstown South offense in the way they really play sideline to sideline. And the handoff goes to Kyle Walker. Penalty flag is down. Walker busts outside. He's still on his feet. He picks up enough yardage for the first down. However, holding will be the call against the Vikings. They went to their short yardage back, and he was helped out, helped out by a hold right in the middle of the line. So that holding penalty will push Clarkstown south back. Second penalty in this first quarter against the Vikings. The number doesn't have to be announced, but our referee did tell Mike Scarpelli that it was the right guard that was called for a hold. Third down and 11. Trip receivers right side. Penalty stalled the first drive for Clarkstown South. Can they overcome it here? Levy looking to throw, going long, and it is incomplete. Off of the hands of Joey Zingaro. He was covered pretty well, but a pretty good throw by Talevi. Reese Andrews for Yorktown in on coverage. A lot of air underneath this pass, allowing Zingaro to run underneath. Great effort there by Zingaro between two defenders trying to high point the football. Got a good look at it. So the Vikings on a fourth down will look to punt it away and try to pin the Huskers back deep in their own territory. Campanero goes back deep and he's inside the 10 yard line to field this kick. It's a high end over end kick that bounces inside the five, takes a good Clarkstown South bounce and they down it inside the five at the three yard line. Gideon Kabat is a real weapon for Clarkstown South. Handles all of the kicking game. Down there by Matt Dotty. Nice job on the hustle on special teams. Part of a unit that got down there inside of the five and made sure that this was not coming out to the 20. So Yorktown will start in the shadow of their own goalpost. We're just about halfway through this first quarter. No score between the Huskers and the Vikings. Yorktown with a first down and 10. Football just shy of, say, the four-yard line. Twin receivers to the right, and Weaver keeps it himself. Now changes direction and dives ahead out to about the 10-yard line. Nice job by Weaver as things were kind of bottled up to the right, and he kind of put the brakes on and took off to the left. Dan Smith in pursuit there, the two-year starter at defensive tackle. He's a senior now, was honored before this final regular season game here in West Nyack. Six foot, 235 pounds, an anchor of that de defensive line along with Arnett Jung, a two-year starter at defensive end. Second down, four. And the Huskers keep it on the ground again. This time a short pickup on the play. Maybe a yard to about the 11-yard line as Boyer carried. Field position is never talked about enough. Yorktown wanted to come out here and not be afraid to take shots, not be afraid to stretch the field. It's tough to do that when you start at your own four. Third down, and let's call it a long two, almost three for the Huskers. Trying to pick up this first down and try to avoid punting from their own end zone, and they should have enough. Nice job by the right side of the offensive line as Keith Boyer followed his blocks and dives ahead. That will move the, the sticks. You know, for most teams, when they have five skill guys shifting before the snap, 
that spells trouble. Not for the Huskers, the motions, the shifts, the different formations, all part of their offense and the execution by Boyer to fight for that extra yardage. Weaver on the run, looking to throw. Now he pulls it down, takes a big hit on the sideline. Yeah, it looks like there's a flag down as well. Let's see. And this one will go against Yorktown. Yeah, Clarkstown South says push him back. Arnett Jung, one of the captains of this Clarkstown South team, senior defensive tackle. Moves the ball back inside the 10 yard line. Football at the eight, call it about a first and 17. And not much there, again, good job by Clarkstown South playing it well. Mike Iodice in on the tackle for the Vikings. It's a 4-4 look for Clarkstown South. And so it makes it very difficult to run against this natural eight-man box. They don't have to bring somebody in. They're already in that type of set, and they've got a lot of meat on that linebacker level that makes it tough to run against. Weaver looking to throw. Has time, now running around near his own goal line. He heaves it down the sideline, and it is incomplete. Some contact th back there, but the ball well overthrown. Intended for Reese Andrews. And T.J. Strickland in on coverage, step for step with the senior receiver for Yorktown. Again, Tommy Weaver trying to improvise in a throwing situation. You know, he's, he's good on the move. He, he's good when he rolls the pocket or escapes. It's just there haven't really been good targets for Weaver to really identify down the field. So a third down. Trips to the right side. Weaver, plenty of time. Has all day still looking. Good coverage by Clarkstown South. Now on the run, fires incomplete. And Sanani trying to come back for that ball. Did a good job to come back, but the ball up over his outstretched arms. Yeah, Weaver had a lot on that throw and really impressive. Good job by the Huskers offensive line. Clarkstown South only rushed three, gave Weaver a lot of time before I believe it was Iodice that came in looking for that late hit and late pressure. Yorktown looked to take a shot and really Sinanai came back too close to Weaver. The diminutive quarterback had a lot on that throw. So Campanero will kick from his own end zone, low snap. And it's a line drive kick, takes a big bounce, picked up by Tuchek, and he drives ahead and takes it inside the 40, close to the 35 yard line. So Clark's down south with tremendous field position to begin this drive in Yorktown territory. Do have a flag down on the far side, so we'll see if this good field position for Clarkstown South holds up. The only thing that's been saving Yorktown so far defensively is that Clarkstown South has started at the 37 and the 35 in their own territory, and this penalty will at least push them back a little closer to midfield. And let's see, they will walk it off against the Vikes. And Penalty has really derailed the first two drives for Clarkstown South. Vikings moving the ball very well between the 20s. Had to punt last time after a missed field goal in their opening series. And the ball pushed back to the 48 yard line. So Clarkstown South still begins the drive on the Yorktown side of the field. First and 10 for the Vikings. And to give us to Tom, he tries to burrow. He's like, fumble, ball loose. Yorktown says they've got it, and they do. So the first turnover of the game, 
gives Yorktown the football near midfield. Even without causing the fumble, best job by the Yorktown defense to swarm to the ball. I think that's Ben Robinson, number one in white, that got his helmet on the ball and also looked to get his hand in there as well. And coming away with the football, I think, was Debetadidic, who was there, the defensive end, just jumping on top of the football for the Yorktown possession. First and 10 for the Huskers. Just shy of the 50-yard line. Weaver looking to throw. Again, has plenty of protection. Rolls out, left side. Again, the coverage outstanding, and he has to throw it away. Tremendous job by the Clarkstown South secondary as Weaver's had time to throw, but he can't find anybody open. So it brings up a second and 10. Vikings trying to get there with four. And I think it's the right move because right now Weaver is not really picking apart the defense. So if you feel comfortable dropping seven in coverage and making sure that everybody's accounted for down the field. Weaver again rolling out, lets it fly and complete. Intended for Boyer. It brings up a third and 10. I really like this approach though by the Huskers mentioned that they didn't want to be afraid to take shots. Sudden change, getting the ball in midfield, a quarterback that hasn't completed a pass yet but has the ability to do so. That time, an overthrow on the run, but I like the way that Mike Rixigno, the Yorktown head coach, is really trusting his quarterback to go out and make a play and seize momentum in this first quarter. So third and 10. Campanero goes in motion. And Weaver straight back to throw. Still plenty of time surveying the field. Now he lets it fly, going long. It is knocked away. Double coverage inside the 10 yard line. And a beautiful play by Mike Gaiodis. Gaiodice, excuse me. Joey Zingaro down there as well. This Yorktown offensive line is holding up against four, and that has allowed Weaver plenty of time to survey the field. Boyer double covered and knocked away. Good play by Iodice. He moved from inside linebacker to safety, a two-year starter on defense, one of six returning starters for the Vikings. Zingaro and Tuchek are back deep, and Campanero punts it away. He's been active here in this first quarter. Fielded by Zingaro, and he takes it up near the 20-yard line, and Clarkstown South will start there. Two minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score between the Vikings and the Huskers. Disappointing series there, I think, for Yorktown. Best starting field position right around midfield, off of the turnover, and a three and out. Three incomplete passes but I do like the mentality throwing on first down and really trying to seize momentum and get on the board here on the road. Drew Talevi in the gun and he hands it off to Walker, the fullback, and he takes it up across the 20 to the 22 or so. This was a big time challenge for the Yorktown defensive line, the size advantage in Clark's down South's favor in a major way. So the Huskers were really looking to change their fronts and change their looks against the Vikings. Talibi going long and it is incomplete. And Ken, good coverage by Yorktown intended for RJ Lamar. Campanero back there to knock it away. Yeah, beautiful job by the safety. Andrews primary coverage guy against Lamar and Campanero shading that way backtracking gets in front of Lamar and disrupts that pass and keeps it away from the dangerous wide receiver so it brings up a third down play Clarkstown South trying to 
Keep this drive going here on a third down and about six. Throw over the middle and the catch made. Bouncing away and heading down the sideline. Big play for Iodice. Mike Iodice with a beautiful run after the catch. Physicality bouncing off of a would-be tackler, picking up a first down and more. Clarkstown South has really liked this play fake and the soft toss over the middle. Reese Andrews with a touchdown saving tackle for Yorktown. And the Vikes take it into Yorktown territory. You throw outside incomplete in and out of the hands of John Tom. A lot of traffic and turbulence in that throw. I think Tom might have lost it as it was thrown his way. I believe there was a player, might have been friendly fire there, an offensive player in between the quarterback and Tom as he gets a talking to from his head coach, Mike Scarpelli. Second down and 10. The ball to 43. Minute 36 left of the first, no score. Levy fires outside, catch made by Tommy. Dives ahead. Actually, it's Lamar. Just got to turn that six, that nine around to a six. <laughs> Both so dangerous. So RJ Lamar picks up good yardage on that catch and run. And now brings up a third down and about five. Last time they went to the play fake and the toss over the middle. And they flip it out to Lamar who juggles it, but finds the handle and picks up first down yardage. So a couple of third down completions to move the chains. Short, timely passes. The first one was to Iodice, this one to Lamar. Getting the ball to your playmakers, allowing them to pick up the extra yardage through the defense. And a big gainer up the middle, barreling inside the 10 yard line is Kyle Walker. Like a runaway freight train. No doubt. How are you gonna stop Kyle Walker inside the five? I, I just don't know how that works. I'd go to him three more times. And they throw it over the middle, incomplete intended for Iodice. Talibi faked the handoff to Walker and then threw a quick little pass over the middle. I feel like this is the Seahawk Patriots <laughs> Super Bowl where you've got a monster in the backfield and five yards to go and the simple play would be to give it to number four. Here's the give and powering his way inside the five yard line is Kyle Walker, he's in! Touchdown! That last lunge gets him into the end zone. I'm no play caller and I will not pretend to be one on TV or elsewhere, but if I get the ball at the five or the six and I've got three downs, I will tell the other team that I'm giving it to this guy, Kyle Walker at 5'11", 240, muscles his way for every inch and puts Clarkstown South on the board first. Kabat in to kick the extra point as the Vikings strike first. Snap good, kick on the way, it is good. So Clark's down south, puts together a good drive, and Kyle Walker finishes things off as he ba barrels into the end zone. I give credit to any player that would look to attempt to tackle Kyle Walker. He's got a defender, Jack Tenari, wrapped up at the ankles, and it just didn't matter. He sheds one more coming in for the extra hit was Valentine. None of it mattered as Kyle Walker pummels his way across and over the goal line. Impressive last lunge by Walker as he dove and then extended the ball over the goal line. And Clark's down south is on the board first. The Vikings lead it seven nothing with 31 seconds left in the first quarter. 
big difference in that drive. No penalties against the Vikings. First two drives that resulted in a missed field goal and a punt. There was a 10-yard penalty that really stalled things for the Vikings. Also crucial, a couple of third down conversions through the air. Drew to Levy, to Iodice and Lamar to move the chains. And a big run by Kyle Walker to set up his touchdown. End over end, kick Boyer inside the five. Brings it right up the middle. And it's brought down across the 20. So the Huskers trailing for the first time tonight. They get the ball across the 20 yard line to the 22. Last possession after a sudden change in midfield, Tommy Weaver looked to throw on first down. Different situation, different field position. Expect more of a conservative play on first down. Campanero goes in motion, and Weaver keeps it himself. Now pitches outside to Campanero, who dives up ahead across the 25. So the Huskers running a little option there, pick up some good yardage on first down. Tommy Weaver always seems to make the right play, whether it's the read option out of the gun, whether it's a traditional option. He always seems to read things well and make the right choice, and that's part of the allure of having a second-year starting quarterback. So that's the end of the first quarter. Clarkstown South trying to remain undefeated. The Vikings score first. They lead it by the score of 7-0 on News 12 Varsity's Game of the Week. Welcome back to Clarkstown South. Lou Brogno along with David Resnick, Amanda Puglisi, our entire News 12 varsity team on this beautiful October evening. Good ball game so far. The undefeated Vikings leading Yorktown 7 to nothing. The Huskers, the defending Section 1 champions. And they're faced here with a second down play to begin quarter number two. The handoff goes nowhere. A very short pickup for Dylan Smith, who carried the football. Smith's got a number of carries this year. That's his first tonight, 44 carries, 180 yards. So a third down play, third down and almost four for the Huskers. And a throw wide open and the diving catch made at the 50 yard line by Joe Atherall. I mean, Atherall, was all by himself. Blown coverage for Clarkstown South. They're just fortunate that the throw was a bit off target as after all, full extension dive to haul it in for Yorktown. And a big run here by Smith as he blasts his way across the 45 yard line. So Yorktown moving the football on the last two plays. They're in Clarkstown South Territory. Here's the tempo for Yorktown that they're able to go to as they pick up some momentum here offensively. Second down, four, and Smith again. Barreling down towards the 40-yard line. There he was close to the first down. Actually, Weaver might have kept it himself that time. He did, he had Boyer in motion, circling around the quarterback as a potential option on the option, and Weaver kept it. This time he does hand it off to Smith, who's hit behind the line of scrimmage and dove forward. He might have gotten enough for the first, but Tom hit him behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like the ball needs to be touching the 40 yard line. And he is short. It is fourth and one, they'll go for it. From the 40, hand off, up the middle, and they didn't need much, and they didn't get much. Let's see if they got enough, Dylan Smith. Both line judges come in beyond the 40 yard line, and as you said, Lou, we're talking inches, just moving the ball from one side of the physical yard line to the other, and they did that and got just enough. So he picks up less than a yard, but that was enough to 
move the chains and they give to Smith again. This time he has a huge hole and is just tripped up. He was on his way to the end zone. Touchdown saving tackle in the secondary by RJ Lamar and Dylan Smith off of that explosive run limps to the sideline. So it brings up a second and one. Smith's done a nice job. He's given this offense a lift off the bench and the football loose and picked up by the Vikings. Turnover by Yorktown. And Clarkstown South has recovered. Matt Dottie on the spot as it was ripped away from Tommy Weaver. First takeaway for the Vikings today. And this came after a Yorktown drive that showed its most life of the first half. First down play, throw over the middle. Lamar makes the catch, and he is pounded immediately. Short pickup on the play. Touchdown South trying to get the explosive R.J. Lamar in the open field, but that time Yorktown closed in on him quickly. I thought before the third down conversion to Iodice where he bounced off the tackler, I, I thought Yorktown had gotten a lot better swarming to the ball and making a play. And look at Kyle Walker bulldozing his way across the 45. That guy is awesome. Again, he plays defensive tackle defensively. And Mike Resigno very candidly said, we have to go tackle a guy as a running back who's bigger than our defensive lineman. Look at the way that Robinson is trying to wrap him up at the waist and then just hold on for dear life at the ankles. Third and two, and the give is to Tom. He looks to turn the corner. He does. He has the first down. Tackled on the corner by Weaver. So Tommy Weaver came over and made a nice open field tackle, but not before Tom picks up the first down for the Vikings. Pound them with Walker inside play the perimeter with Tom and Lamar in the running and the short passing game. It's a great combination for this offense. Ticking down towards eight minutes remaining in the first half. Clark's down south with a seven nothing lead and a penalty flag thrown. And this no doubt will be some kind of a motion penalty I would think against the Vikings and indeed it is a legal procedure. So that'll march him back five. Takes the ball back into the Vikings territory at the 49. It'll be first and 15. There's one critique of Clarkstown South offensively in this first half. They've been a bit penalty prone. Walker again. And this time he's wrapped up after a pickup of two or three. Second down, 11. Iodice in motion and movement on the line. And this will go against the Vikings. So penalties have been hurting this Clarkstown South offense. They've been their own worst enemy, no doubt, David, in this first half. Offense led by Scott Saunders. He's the offensive coordinator, one of three different former head coaches on this staff that joins Mike Scarpelli in his visor roaming the sideline. Throw comes outside, catch made by Tuchek. And he is up across the 50. And part of the rise of Clarkstown South as they look for their fifth straight year of at least six wins is the improvement of the overall coaching staff, whether it be a bunch of guys with former head coaching experience running one of the three different units, or in the case of Frank Tuchek, a former Clarkstown South star back with the program. Third down, throw over the middle, 
ball nearly intercepted. Intended for Tuchek, but almost picked off by Keith Boyer. Who had a beat on it. Boyer might have gotten crossed off a little bit because it got through Tuchek and it changed his vision. Boyer might have had the best chance at that one as it was a bit overthrown. So Kabat is in to punt it away. And Campanero goes back deep to receive. He'll be inside his 15-yard line. Excuse me. High, booming kick. Fair catch called for, but it bounces into the end zone. And on the touchback, Yorktown will take it out to the 20. Excellent job by Campanero. At first, I thought he was going to make a mistake drifting inside of the 10 but he knew exactly where he was on the field, and unfortunately for Gideon Kabat, who downed one inside of the five earlier, he could not work the same magic. Just under six and a half remaining, second quarter. Parks down south, up seven to nothing. Talked about this high-powered Clarks down south offense with this Yorktown defense. has done a nice job here in this first half, holding them down. Kind of in-game adjustments do Mike Resigno and Mike Scarpelli have as we're midway through the second. Boyer hit behind the line of scrimmage and drop. Matt Dottie with great penetration. And he throws him for a big loss. Both of these head coaches with at least 14 years of experience at their current club. Boyer just getting blown up. Dottie was the one that recovered the fumble on the last possession. Plays both ways. He's seen a lot of time as a lineman on both sides of the ball. Second down, 11. And off goes Boyer outside and finds a seam. Gets to the corner and brings it up across the 35-yard line. And that'll be a Yorktown first down. You mentioned earlier, Lou, Keith Boyer entering this contest, 11 yards a carry. He has big play ability for the Huskers, and someone who finds himself in the running back rotation as just a 10th grader. First and 10 for the Huskers at the 35. Gonna give to Boyer again, he cuts outside, a penalty flag is down, and Boyer takes it up across the 45 but again there is a flag down and this one's probably coming back and it is against Yorktown holding five minutes 36 seconds remaining in this second quarter Parkstown South with the lead on a short touchdown run by Kyle Walker. And that's been the scoring here in this first half. Casey just joined us. The Vikings coming in undefeated at 5-0. And, oh. and Yorktown trying to break a two-game losing streak as the Huskers come in at three up and two down. Weaver looking to throw. And he lets it fly. It's nearly intercepted by Iodice. And if Iodice had picked that, he might have been heading for six. John Mariah got to the quarterback. Linebacker came on a blitz to put the pressure on Tommy Weaver who in passing situations really hasn't felt the pressure because the Vikings have only rushed four. But that time definitely got rid of the ball before he wanted to because Mariah, the sophomore linebacker, came through nearly untouched. Weaver setting up a screen, and he does flip it out to Dylan Smith, who's got some blockers in front, and Smith hits the corner. He's down the sideline. A penalty flag is down again. So what appeared to be a big Yorktown play, most likely coming back again. And it was a flag thrown on the near side of the field. 
on a play that was run to the far sideline. And Mike Resigno's a bit hot. Can't tell whether that's in the direction of his team or the officiating. So it is against the Huskers with the illegal block. Brings it back to the 32 yard line. One of the real good guys in section one was so close a couple of times getting to the championship game undefeated against Rye, a team they beat in the regular season. Getting to the championship game against Somers undefeated a couple of years ago, a team they beat in the regular season. And then to return last year against their nemesis, the Tuskers, the reigning New York State champs, Yorktown took them down and won that elusive crown. Second down pl play, second down at 13. Weaver rolling out. Weaver being chased on the run, delivers, and the catch is made. Good throw by Weaver on the run. And a catch made by Sinanai, the big tight end. That is his go-to target and their first connection today. Weaver comfortable on the run. And he just... Whoa. Sananai just a, delivers the punishment to the defender, but Weaver, he just doesn't press. I mean, he, he's got a defender on his back and he doesn't seem to mind. Weaver setting up a screen incomplete and a hit afterwards, but no flag. Some of the Yorktown fans kind of moaned after that one. Intended for Dylan Smith. The Yorktown head coach did a little more than just moan there. <laughs> I think he wanted a, a flag as Mark Mariah came in. It wasn't a particularly hard hit, but definitely Dylan Smith wasn't prepared to absorb the blow. You know, get back to Sinanai. He averages over 15 yards per catch. He's got 16 catches out of that tight end position. And a handoff outside, breaking tackles is Smith again. And he picks up first down yardage for Yorktown. They've really started to move the ball the last couple possessions. They don't have anything to show, show for it. If you remember on their last drive, started way back at their own 22, got across midfield before fumbling the ball away. But this is a type of time-consuming, churning-type drive that the Huskers have the capability to put together, and now that their run game and their screen game could open up some big plays down the field. And Smith breaks a tackle in the backfield and dives forward across the 35-yard line. You almost get the sense, Lou, and it's too early in the game for this, that the Huskers are starting to wear down this Clarkstown south defense and while the vikings might have the size advantage yorktown trying to use their quickness and versatility and depth to their advantage weaver keeps it himself and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage good penetration by iodice i love iodice's game as the safety for clarkstown south against the run he's so quick to come up to the point of attack to attack the line of scrimmage and go after the ball carrier. And in coverage, he just seems to have a nose for the ball and understanding where it's gonna end up. Give his to Boyer, breaks a tackle and dives forward. That should be enough for Yorktown first down. Huskers are so close to breaking a big one there. Boyer through a huge hole, got tripped up just as he got into the second level. But whether it's Boyer or Smith, They've been really close to making that final cut or juke to get into the open field. First and 10. Three plus minute drive here for the Huskers. Three and a half remaining in the second. Boyer cuts it back in. Good run by Keith Boyer as he drives ahead for almost seven yards or so, maybe eight. Matteo Cermelli, Jack Tenari, left tackle, left guard respectively. And this Clarkstown South defense is on its heels. They called timeout because the last couple of plays, they have been gashed by this Yorktown rushing attack. So the Vikings want to talk it over defensively with 316 remaining here in the second quarter. Clarkstown South still has the lead, but Yorktown is threatening. Huskers will have a second down and two. 
upcoming. Clarkstown South, Lou entering tonight's game, potentially in line for a number one seed entering next week's qualifying round. The top 16 seeds in Class A will move on to what is basically a prelude to the playoffs. And Clarkstown South, just one of three teams remaining undefeated entering week six. Our Lady of Lords took down Yorktown last week and John Jay off to another 5-0 start for the second year in a row. The Indians dangerous offensively. Well, let's check in with Amanda, who's down on the sidelines. Amanda? Well, earlier, Lou, you and David were talking about Yorktown's championship win last year. And when I talked to Coach Resigno about it, he said it really energized, re-energized the program. It was so great for the community. And it really has set the bar high for Yorktown. But he says his team comes into this season looking to repeat. But he says expecting to win and earning the win are two completely different things. Second down and two for his team here as the give is to Boyer. Breaks one tackle, slips another, and drives forward. Close to first down yardage. Lost his helmet on the play. So he'll have to come out for the next snap. And to continue on the point that Amanda made, Mike Resigno and Yorktown so close a couple of times and, and to lose in devastating fashion and then to get back there with a different group and finally win it was so satisfying. Bouncing outside of Smith, he's hit and driven back. Not sure he got there. Iodice in on the play for the Vikings. Led the charge as the Vikings swarmed to the football. If there was no gain on the play, I think they would definitely go for it, but this loss makes it a bit more difficult. But the offense is on the field. And it is a fourth down and almost three. Hard count here by Tommy Weaver. And now the Huskers take a timeout. So Weaver might have been trying to just draw Clarkstown South offside there to try to pick up the first down. So it'll be interesting to see if the Huskers indeed still will go for on fourth down. Well, of course, you'll see highlights of this game and all the big games in the tri-state area on the football fix coming up Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Optimum Channel 61. A lot of big games throughout the tri-state area this weekend. Always seems to be the case. Fry Harrison in Section 1, a big matchup. Thinking Westchester County, Iona Prep on the road to face... Monsignor Farrell, two of the three remaining unbeaten teams in the CHSFL, and what do you know? Another week, another big game in the North Jersey Super Football Conference, St. Joe's, Bergen Catholic. It was the rivalry before the rivalry, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, Bergen Bosco, but before that, Bergen St. Joe's, that was the game. And in a lot of rankings, that's one versus two this weekend. Absolutely, one of the uh, great rivalries in North Jersey, it'll be at Bergen Catholic on Saturday. Here's Weaver firing, end zone, caught, touchdown, Yorktown. Campanero on the reception, and Weaver threw a bullet. Gutsy call, gutsy play. It's that type of execution that shows the metal and the grip, grit and the mentality for Yorktown. Going forward on fourth down on the road and a quarterback who's been, to be fair, shaky at best with his accuracy in this first half, throws an absolute dart to Campanero for the touchdown. So the Husker is trying to tie it up. Extra point kick is up and it is good. 204 remaining here in the second quarter. We've got ourselves a game. Yorktown 7, Clarkstown South 7. Campanero on the right side of the formation. Weaver with plenty of time, and he sneaks it in between two defenders. Campanero, a bit of a juggle. Didn't see that initially. Over the top of Tuchek, the outside linebacker, inside of Zingaro, the cornerback. 
and Nick Campanero has the touchdown. Well, Campanero, nice job to keep his concentration there and get the handle. That was a that was a fastball thrown by by Weeper. A line shot. Four and a half minute drive, Lou. 80, mi uh, 80 yards as Campanero scores his first touchdown today. First score for the Huskers to tie it up here on the road. Short kick in Clarkstown South. We'll get good field position across the 35. Ryan Smith on the reception there on that return for the Vikings. Well, Clarkstown South has some time, a minute. 52 left here in this second quarter. <laughs> there are the plays being sent in for Clarkstown South. Those are the play calls. Well, I, I see, see Bar Barney on how, there. You know, that caught my eye too. <laughs> Shows you where my mentality is. That's the only one I recognize was Barney. Yeah, what does that say about me? <laughs> we'll have to talk about Here's this during the, halftime. It's the throw outside as Tom breaks a tackle. Wait, we <laughs> should get another try at that. Hold on a second. <laughs> John Tom picks up good yardage. It's like tweet at Lou Brogno if you <laughs> can help us out with any of those signs. As a quick toss in the flat there for Tom. Yorktown goes to wrap him up. On a second down play, play action and Talibi fires down. Lamar makes the catch, breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Clarkstown South. R.J. Lamar beats the secondary coverage and high steps into the end zone. Lamar gets behind the secondary and Talevi doesn't miss. Two play drive answers the four and a half minute drive for Yorktown. We talked about the big playability of this Clarkstown South offense. We saw it there. Kabat to kick the extra point and he drills it through. One. 22 remaining here, second quarter. Clarkstown South regains the lead. It's 14-7 Vikings. Clean pocket, and it's dropped in perfectly. And Lamar breaking a couple of tackles at the end, stepping out. They do such a great job, Clarkstown South, of creating good opportunities and good matchups. Lamar got matched up there against a trailing outside linebacker. That favors Clarkstown South seven out of seven days of the week and twice under the lights of Friday night. So just like that, the Vikings answer and they're up by a touchdown. It's 14 to seven. 121 left here in the second. Do you think that was the Barney play? <laughs> if it was, they should call that again. <laughs> The best part is not so much the images, which is great, but then speaking to the players and coaches afterwards to understand that Barney is purple and that's the nickname for Lamar and so that's the play over the top to him, which I just made up, but sometimes it, it's that unique or silly. <laughs> well, Yorktown. Now trailing once again by seven. And they'll have a first and 10 at the 25, just a minute 15 left of the first half. And what a momentum swing. Yorktown ties the game up with 2.04 to go. If they can hold on and get this game even to the locker room, they get the ball to start the second half. And now they take the field with 1.15 remaining and two timeouts, trailing again by a touchdown. Weaver rolling out on the run. Catch made by Boyer. And he is tripped up out of bounds. Looks like, looks like one of the officials was upended on the sideline. Gets up very slowly, but appears 
to be okay. Scary moment there for a second. And in any game, the, the line judges have to be alert, but especially in this one, as these teams like to play sideline to sideline and have players that really attack the perimeter. And off Smith. Dylan Smith has provided a spark in the running game for the Huskers here this first half. It really has combined nicely with Boyer in the second quarter, and then it's Campanero that has the touchdown grab. Second down. Weaver looking to throw. On the run. Now he tries to plant himself and is being chased. Takes off and steps out of bounds across the 45. Stops the clock with 39 seconds left here in the second. Campanero and Sananai were both downfield and covered as Weaver was looking to that side of the field. Again, when you're not rushing a ton of players or you're only rushing four, that means there's plenty back in coverage and three were out in receiving routes for the Huskers and there was really nowhere to go for Weaver that did a nice job to come up with a positive play on that broken attempt. Third down and about four, Weaver pump fakes. Now he lets it fly, going deep and it is intercepted. Picked off by Zingaro. Well overthrown, and Zingaro just playing center field back there. Picks it off for the Vikings. Boyer with the double move. That was the option the whole way. And Weaver just sensing time and score and time and place. Send it down the field. Give Boyer a chance, but this was a bit too overthrown. Zingaro's there. 28 seconds for a lot of teams deep in their own end up a touchdown. This would be 100% take a knee. But you've got two timeouts left, nearly a half minute. You just scored on a 64 yard bomb over the middle. You have explosive athletes. Do they take a chance and try to pile it on? It doesn't look like they will, but at least this is the type of team where you at least have to think about it. Well, they faked taking a knee and they hand it off to Lamar. Lamar gets a block on the corner, gets outside, and cuts it back and steps out of bounds at the 25. How do you like that play? They lined up as if they were going to take a knee, and the next thing you know, Lamar is running outside. So with 15 seconds left, The Vikings will set up here. Let's see if they run another play or if they will indeed take a knee this time. Yorktown certainly on alert after that play. And in that formation, they do take the knee as Talibi kills the clock and the clock runs down and that'll do it. So the first half comes to an end and a very good first half of football between these two outstanding teams. Clarkstown South heads to the locker room with a one touchdown lead. They're up 14 to seven. Pretty good first half of football. It was, give a lot of credit to Yorktown, the underdog in this game against the Clarkstown South team. Undefeated to this point, playing at home in the final week of the regular season. And I don't think the Huskers really appreciated that second to last play from scrimmage, an extended huddle before the Huskers go into their halftime dynamics. We'll see if that could be a game changing, game turning play after the break in which the Huskers will get the ball first to start the third. Well, the Vikings one half away from continuing their undefeated season. Yorktown took the lead, but Clarkstown South answered on the long bomb to Lamar. At halftime, Clarkstown South is up by seven. Welcome back to Clarkstown South, where the homestanding Vikings lead Yorktown by the score of 14 to seven. Lou Brockno, David Resnick, Amanda Puglisi down on the sidelines. Let's check in with Amanda. 
Well, Lou, in this game and in most football games, there's always a lot of talk about players like the quarterback, the running back, wide receivers, and even the linemen. But what about a long snapper? Well, there's one in New Jersey who is making some national headlines, and Jason Kahn of News 12 New Jersey caught up with him. It's a routine Joe Shimko goes through just about every day on this field at Wall. His job is to get the ball to the punter accurately. That can be difficult, especially when the pressure's on. Everybody's looking at you. You're, it's your job to get the ball there, and if you mess up, then you kind of screw the team over. Lucky for him, he hasn't experienced that yet, and maybe never will. He's one of only two long snappers in the country to be honored as a U.S. Army All-American. He's also going to North Carolina State, a top Division I school, on a full scholarship. He's important in more ways than one. Shimko is also a linebacker, but all of those accolades are because of his long snapping. It kind of gets discouraging every once in a while when you accomplish a lot of things and people don't really recognize it, but in the end, everybody realizes what happens and you get, you get all your attention later on. He's had his coach's attention for the past two seasons. It's one part of the game they never have to worry about. Joe is so automatic that you know, we overlook it. You know, we do because we rely on him so much and we can, it's a, it's a guaranteed snap. Pros do this for a living. Manahawkins Clark Harris is in his 12th season now playing with the Bengals. How far do you want to take this? As far as I can. The spotlight and the respect he's yearned for will certainly follow. Jason Kahn, News 12, New Jersey. Talk about some high pressure situations for Joe over there in New Jersey. Well, Clarkstown South is leading this one at halftime 14 to 7. Don't go anywhere because we have more football coming up. And of course, we're going to have some highlights for you after the break. Back at Clarkstown South, the Vikings leading Yorktown by the score of 14 to 7. A lot of action in that first half. And David, the first big play of this game really came on special teams. 35-yard attempt for Gideon Kabat, and it is swatted down by John Bowen. And Yorktown comes up with a good play defensively. Ben Robinson jarring the ball free and coming up with a fumble for Yorktown. But Clarkstown South defense would hold, and then Kyle Walker plunges in from about four yards. And then they come up with a turnover of its own. Deepak Joseph knocks it free. But Yorktown would have the answer next possession on fourth down. Tommy Weaver to Nick Campanero. Yorktown went on a four-plus minute drive, and it took two plays for Clarkstown South to answer over the top to R.J. Lamar for 64 yards, closing seconds of the first half. Joey Zingaro looking like the receiver on that interception as Clarkstown South leads 14 to 7 with the Huskers set to get the ball to begin the third quarter. Two big issues I think in that that first half, certainly Clarkstown South probably hurt did hurt themselves offensively with as many penalties as they had. The Vikings might have some even more than 14 points if not for those penalties. And very interesting that Tommy Weaver had a lot of time to throw the football in that first half for Yorktown. It'd be interesting to see if Clarkstown South puts any more pressure on him or makes any adjustments in that area in the second half. Well, to your first point, the penalties, it definitely did hurt Clarkstown South early on. They had a pair of drives one that ended with that missed field goal that we saw, another that ended with a punt that started really in a promising factor and then a hold and a block in the back respectively stalled those drives. I think it's part of the strategy for Clarkstown South. Only rush four, give Weaver a lot of time, who is a strong arm quarterback, but drop plenty in coverage because you're only seeing about three players for Yorktown go out in routes. You're not talking four or five. So the coverage is there for the Vikings and they haven't allowed any big plays down the field. Well, great game tonight and a couple of huge games coming up over the next two weeks as well. Next Saturday out on Long Island, Ward Melville going up against Floyd. That'll be a 2 p.m. kickoff next Saturday, October 13th, big, big game out on the eastern part of Long Island. Then on October 19th, the War at the Shore. Huge game down in New Jersey's Shore Conference as the Casey's of Red Bank Catholic 
to take on the Bulldogs of Rumson. So that's coming up over the next two weeks. Looking forward to those two outstanding contests. Right here, we've got another great half to go. Clarkstown South leading Yorktown 14 to seven. Second half upcoming here on News 12 Varsity's Game of the Week. Well, you see the Vikings of Clarkstown South enjoying a seven point lead as we get ready for this second half. Let's check in with Amanda. Well, Lou, of course, a lot of positivity on both sides, but when you talk to Coach Resigno, as he was telling his team, listen, we're about to head into the third and fourth quarters here. There is no being tired in the second half. We really need to just push through. They're a really good football team, Clarkstown South is, so he was just saying we have to just push through and really just show them what exactly Yorktown football is all about. And on the other side for Clarkstown South, when I talked to Coach Scarfelli, he was saying, look, we're trying to be 6-0. It is not easy to be 6-0 if it was everybody would be doing it but in order for them to get to that six win mark he says we're going to have to clean up the penalties in the second half yeah absolutely amanda that uh, certainly was a problem if you will for the vikings in that first half but they do have the lead they're up 14 to 7 and they have shown the ability to to move the football on a consistent basis i love when coach speak doesn't really add up because <laughs> it'd be impossible for every team to be 6 and 0 <laughs> but i get his jest and it really it, it's part of a of a 5 year run for clarkstown south and even a part of that 5 year run the, the last 3 we'll, which we'll get into a, a little bit later just in terms of clarkstown south building their program and building their momentum and something that mike scarpelli said before the game is playing a double a schedule for as long as they were in double a which I, I think was since the beginning when they went to the state tournament for, format back in 1994 but as of late playing new rochelle three times over the last two years playing scarsdale playing other top level teams and for clarkstown south to go from the semifinals to the finals in double a and drop down to a because of enrollment and immediately be in the mix. Five years ago, Lou, they would have garnered some headlines as a double A going to an A, thinking, okay, it's a drop potentially in competition. They'll be more of a factor along with the Clarkstown North and a Spring Valley. The reason why they were thought of so highly entering this season, more so than they would have been perhaps in a different time under Mike Scarpelli, is how well they've played the last handful of years. And as we said, coming into this game, they have played exceptionally well on both sides of the ball, but partic particularly the, the offensive side, averaging 44 points per game. And you can see both captains out there at midfield, both quarterbacks, Drew Talibi of Clarkstown South and Tommy Weaver of Yorktown. Now remember, Yorktown originally won the toss but deferred so they will get the football first to begin this second half. Parks down south will kick off. Right to left on your screen here in this third quarter. You know, this is the last game of the season for both teams in which you don't need to win to play the next week. Although if you actually lose in the qualifying round or in the playoffs, there are consolation games. But in terms of playing meaningful football, this is the last chance that you get. We're in the first week of October, but this is the last chance that you get to slip up on the season. Kick sails to the five yard line and Keith Boyer slips down, tried to make a cut just shy of the 20. And Yorktown will put it in play there. Huskers coming into three and two, trying to break a two game losing streak. Lost a very tough game last week to an exceptional Lords team by two points, 35 to 33. And Mike Resigno thinks that his team gave away both games. That a couple of breaks, a couple of plays going a different direction than Yorktown could be a fellow 5-0 team. Also lost to uh, 
Somers 35-21. The Tuskers putting up 35 points in that game. Handoff goes to the left side. Short pickup on first down. Looked like Smith, Drew, Dylan Smith on that carry. And he had a number of outstanding carries in that first half. And what was so interesting for Yorktown, Mike Resigno not making any excuses, not accepting that this is a younger team as a reason why a loss is okay. And a throw over the middle. Nice throw by Tommy Weaver. Sananai on the reception. He's what a, a target. Yeah, good looking tight end. Unfortunately for us, we are not given heights and weights for these Huskers. But he just stands out in terms of his build and his frame. He's well over six feet. And a really solid frame to both block as he is on the right side of the line and be an important pass catcher. First and 10. And Tommy Weaver keeps it himself and takes it up across the 35. First minute of play. Quarter number three, and Yorktown with their initial possession of the second half, trailing by seven. Very good crowd on hand here tonight at Clarkstown South, and I'm impressed by the amount of student body that is here. Great school spirit. Here's the handoff, and nice defensive play. That was Dylan Smith on the carry. Looked like Mariah, Johnny Mariah, came in on the tackle. And there's a look at the crowd. And you can see a lot of students in that shot. A lot of brown and gold as well. A lot of students, not a lot of them looking to the field. <laughs> hey, but they're here. <laughs> Having a good time on this Friday night. Oh, that was my first get off my lawn movement of my life. That was pretty <laughs> rough, Lou. Here is Weaver looking to throw. Fires and it is caught. Beautiful throw by Weaver over the middle. Blake Borges on the catch. His first reception of the game. There are multiple weapons for the Huskers. In addition to Sinanai, Blake Borges, Reese Andrews, Joe Atherall, who had a reception earlier. That's a nice job by Borges to collect the football, secure it, and move the chains. And the give to Smith, who is hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Short pickup on the play. Johnny Mariah over there again. You know, a lot of young talent on this Yorktown team, too. You know, Dylan Smith's only a junior. Boyer's a sophomore. Blake Borges is a sophomore. we have got some promising young players. And they give this Smith again, tries to weave his way ahead. But this time, Clarkstown South read it well. Very short pickup on the play, so it's going to bring up a third and long for the Huskers. But what makes the Huskers program, especially in the last six seasons and even seven seasons that they've been in Class A so impressive is that they pass the torch to the next group. Weaver looking to throw. He pump fakes. He's got all day again. And he takes it outside, has to pull it down, and carries up across the 50. Again, great coverage downfield by the Vikings. Weaver could not pull the trigger. So it brings up a fourth down, and Yorktown's drive comes to a stall. They'll have to punt it away. Iodice defensively has really been in the middle of everything. One of the defensive captains for Clarkstown South. Every time you look up, you see number 21 involved in the play defensively for the Vikings. And that punch sails out of bounds as Tuchek stays away. So Clarkstown South will have their first offensive possession of the second half. Vikings with a 14-7 lead, 8.04 remaining in the third. Touchdowns by Kyle Walker, RJ Lamar from Drew Talevi. See, given more of an opportunity, we recognize many more symbols than just the Barney. <laughs> we, didn't give a, we didn't give ourselves enough credit, although in truth, 
we're actually seeing, they're double-sided, so this is giving us more opportunities to get pop culture references. Well, there's a penalty flag, and this will go against Clutchtown South. Five-yard mark off. Well, the whole idea of staying away from penalties from Clarkstown South, not getting off on the right foot. Quick throw, batted back. As Talibi tried to throw over the middle to Iodice, but it was knocked away. It looked like Jack Tenari in the middle there who got a piece of it. It was the starting middle linebacker play fake. They've gone to this quite a bit. The intended target was Iodice over the middle. It's been a familiar and successful play for Clarkstown South, but Tenare disengaging from his block, active hands, bats it up and away. The Tenare coming into this game, 46 tackles from his middle linebacker position for Yorktown. It's been a stellar defensive player for the Huskers and a big run here again barreling ahead Kyle Walker <laughs> that's Lou that's not fair you expect to be punished by Kyle Walker between the tackles we can accept that right that premise but to now see him scamper on the perimeter and turn the corner and get close to a first down and close to a 15 yard pickup that's just so impressive so it's third down and one as he picks up good yardage on that second down carry. And Talibi backs off and checks out the play once again as he looks towards the Vikings sideline. Hands it off, and this is Tom who breaks outside and stays in bounds, keeps his balance, and takes it up across the 45-yard line. John Tom with a terrific run. Walker lost his cleat on his second down run, so he could not be an option on third and short. So they go to John Tom out of the backfield. Always looking for more yardage. Lost his balance momentarily. Levy going long, and it is incomplete, and no flag intended for Lamar. Eddie Capone applying heat, the outside linebacker for Yorktown on Talevi, who stood in the pocket and took a hit and trying to make a play down the field. 6.52 left in the third. Clarkstown South up by a touchdown. It's 14-7. Second down, 10. Twin receivers right side. And the give is to Tom. John Tom gets outside, hits the corner. And takes it across the 40-yard line of Yorktown. Ben Robinson chasing Tom out of bounds, but not before the two-year starting senior picks up a first down. Great job sealing the edge, but just that individual play, the juke right on the perimeter of the line creates the space necessary for Tom to get into the open field. A low snap. And picked up by Talevi. He did good to get control of it. A couple of shaky exchanges today. Surprised to see that between a senior at center and this two-year starting quarterback, Drew Talevi. So it's a loss of three. Second down, 13. Talibi looking to throw. Yeah, he steps up, he's going long, and it is incomplete. Intended for Tuchek. <laughs> See Tuchek turn around right away. He's like, hey, I was interfered with, but the officials are not biting on that one. Dean Paterno, a now, junior defensive back. Sorry, David, the flag is thrown now very late. And it might be an unsportsmanlike conduct. Let's see. Against Yorktown. And it is unsportsmanlike conduct against the Huskers. So 
on the dead ball foul. They'll march it off. It's well after the play. Takes the football all the way down to the 26 yard line. So we talked about Clarkstown's South committing pen penalties that stalled their drive in the first half. Well, Yorktown just committed a penalty that might ignite a drive here for the Vikings in the third. John Tom on the carry, takes it down near the 20. Pick up of about six, second and four. Tom again, huge hole, breaks into the Yorktown secondary and then puts his head down and drives inside the 15 down to the 12 yard line. You know, I wonder sometimes from an offensive play calling perspective, you've got a lot of weapons, you want to spread it around, but sometimes just going to a similar type play over and over again until it can be stopped as Tom again, this time between the tackles, you wonder, Lou, if sometimes you could get a bit caught up in your play sheet wanting to try different things instead of just continuing to go to something that works. Well, it's the old coaching philosophy. You just run the, you just keep running the same play until the opposition stops it. Throw over the middle, and it is incomplete, and down goes the official again seems to be okay. First it was one of the line judges and now it's the umpire that's been targeted. Occupational hazard tonight in Rockland County. The referee and the far linesman better watch out, they're next. <laughs> well, it's third down and almost eight I'd call it. Officially, they say third and seven, but a little further than that. Here is the give up the middle, and again, it's John Tom. He is short of first down yardage. It will bring up a fourth down for the Vikings, and with a 14-7 lead, let's see if they'll go for the touchdown, or at least the first down, or line up for a field goal, and looks like they will try to kick it. They have a strong kicker in Gideon Kabat, any score here makes it a two score game. And did you catch, and here's a good look, at John Tom's helmet. Yeah. Look at that physicality, the gold has been peeled or shaved off. That's a lot of contact. You know that's a kid that plays hard, fighting for every extra yard. It will be a, about a 22 yard field goal attempt for Kabat. Kick is up, and it is no good. Had the distance, but wide. So it is still 14 to seven. Yorktown dodges a Clarkstown South scoring opportunity there. It's a five and a half or a four and a half minute drive, I beg your pardon. That does not end in points. So Yorktown still very much in it here, down by seven. Not a lot of time left, 331 left in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Huskers. And the handoff comes outside. Smith cuts it in, breaks into the secondary. Dylan Smith with a big run, picks up a Yorktown first down. Well, if you believe in previous history, the last time Yorktown scored, the only time they scored today, they started at its own 20-yard line. 
What a different game and feel this would be, Lou, if Clark's down south didn't get that late touchdown in the first quarter, less than a minute after the Huskers got on board. This time, Smith brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and again, it is Iodice. It's almost like you don't have to look, Lou. I'll just tell you that there's a big defensive play, and you just say Iodice, because he has been tremendous. There is an injured player down. And let's see, this might be a cramp. And that is John Tom, who has been a workhorse tonight on the offensive side of the ball. Here playing defensively, looks like he's got a cramp and let's try to work that out. Lou, you mentioned Clarkstown South undefeated. Opportunity to finish the regular year six and zero. Oh and continue to build on the last couple of years for Clarkstown South where they found a lot of success in the double A, reaching two years ago the sectional semifinals, last year getting to a championship game with a seven and three record. Of those five losses over the last couple of years, four of them came to New Rochelle. So except for the best team in the section, they were nearly perfect. Sitting at 5-0 and oh this season, having wrapped up their third straight league championship, this Vikings team really on the rise and trying to cap it off this season with their first sectional championship in the state tournament era. Well, John Tom appears to be okay as he walks off the field under his own power. It's really amazing, Lou. The last three seasons, 19-5 and five overall, 19-1, and one against teams not named New Rochelle. Their only loss was to Scarsdale last year in the regular season. Second down play, Weaver keeps it himself. And again, Clark's down south, strings it out nicely. Nowhere for Weaver to go, he tried to hit that corner. And Weaver's helmet popped off, so he's gotta come out for a play. And on a third down play, that's a big situation there. Blake Borges, who is typically a receiver, the backup quarterback. And he lines up in the gun on a third down and about eight. He hands it off to Smith, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Beautiful play by Arnett Jung. Unfortunately for Yorktown, the exit of Tommy Weaver really made the Huskers, I think, one-dimensional. Actually, it was 32, Johnny Mariah. Let's give credit where credit's due. Mariah playing with his cousin, Mark. Both sophomores starting inside linebackers, both juniors in terms of their names. Mark, his father's name is Mark. John, his father's name is John. Those are the two Mariah brothers that produced the Mariah first cousins. Minute 25 left. Again, that rugby type punt straight up into the air. And up the elevator shoot there. And comes down at the 40 yard line. Clarkstown South will have good field position to begin this drive. With a minute 11 left in the third quarter, still a 14-7 Vikings lead. Bit of a surprise, I think, in terms of the score to this point. Not surprising that Clarkstown South is ahead, but you talked earlier, Lou, about the explosive offense of the Vikings, put 49 on the board on the road against Rye. Some of their earlier results had them above the 39-point plateau. Kyle Walker down the sidelines. One man to beat. And he barrels over the defender. <laughs> Campanero came over. And they kind of tap each other. Nice play by Campanero to bring down Walker, but Walker has a big gainer. That's 50 yards on the run to the outside. And Kyle Walker is more than just a between the tackler runner. Here is Talibi, fires outside, catch made. Two check on the reception. 
inside the 15, down to about the 12. So a second down upcoming. Second down at seven. Final minute of play, quarter number three. We're down to 30 seconds. They have one touchdown drive of two plays. Here's their third play of this series, looking for more. Trip receivers go to the right side. And the give is up the middle. Walker breaking tackles, still on his feet. Barrels towards the end zone. And he's in. Touchdown, Clarkstown South. I love this kid. It takes your entire squad to bring this kid down. His 50-yard run set up this pinballing type touchdown run here to cap it off. If you have to be committed to bringing this kid down, what a special runner. 5'11", 240, and does he have a center of gravity? Oh, Kabat in to kick the extra point. Now I need the power. We got my winning ticket. And it's blocked. Bowen again, I think. Blocked uh, field goal attempt earlier in there, knocking down the PAT. But there's a look at Kyle Walker. The Vikings have a 20 to seven lead. First play from scrimmage. It's a 65 yard touchdown drive. It began 50 of them, a big chunk. Campanero taking down Walker two plays later. I mean, just look at the contact. Campanero again, one more defender. Walker just will not go down without a fight. And we saw this earlier on his previous touchdown run. He has such a great sense of the goal line, knowing to fall forward, to fight for every inch, just getting the nose of the football over the plane for his second score today. Yeah, so, you saw the uh, ball break loose there at the end of the play, but the ball had crossed the plane. So it was a touchdown for Clarkstown South. Those cheerleaders this year <laughs> have become very strong and good at push-ups for all the offense that the Vikings have scored. Ah, this is nothing tonight for them, only 20 <laughs> so far. It's a bit of a reprieve, it's a light <laughs> night. Good kickoff coverage by the Vikings and Yorktown is pinned back at their own 15 yard line. Five seconds left here in the third. Third straight quarter in which Clarkstown South has put a touchdown on the board in the final 90 seconds. And in truth, scoring late in the first and late in the third doesn't really have so much of a game-changing effect because the game just carries over into the next quarter. But their touchdown in the second and the third were quick strikes. Trip receivers left side, and Weaver pitches outside Campanero. And he's brought down at the line of scrimmage, and that will be the last play of the third quarter. So the Vikings tack on another score here in the third, and at the end of three, it's 20 to seven, Clarkstown South on the News 12 varsity game of the week. Ah, some future Vikings. And that's, uh, that's some dance they got go going there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that looks like us prior to the pregame show. <laughs> They've gotten more air time than us tonight. Who do you got to talk to for that? <laughs> we go to the fourth quarter. It's 20 to 7. Oh, I think down south. somebody found Amanda on the sidelines. That's always <laughs> a good person to talk to to get on air. You guys yeah, they went to the source. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a throw outside, catch made, and a nice play tiptoeing up the sideline, Dylan Smith. Oh, good pickup on that play. By the way, Blake Borges still in there at quarterback for Yorktown. 
kind of interesting. He came in for Weaver, whose helmet had come off, but Weaver has not come back. So I don't know if he has a problem with that helmet or if he was injured somehow. Here's Borges firing, and it's incomplete. Knocked away. Nice play by Zingaro. That brings up a second down play, second and 10. Caught a glimpse of Weaver on the sideline. Was sitting momentarily. They're speaking with the athletic trainer. Borges looking to throw on the run, and he pulls it down and is dragged down across the 40-yard line. So third down upcoming, third down and four for Yorktown to try to keep this drive going. They're down by two touchdowns. But a lot of time, we're just in the first minute of play of quarter number four. Dave Burns, the athletic trainer for Yorktown, a leader in that field in the area, doing a great job educating broadcasters included about his role and, and job and the type of things they do throughout the game in the season. And gorgeous firing over the middle, but nobody on the receiving end intended for Joe Atherall, but well over his head. So it brings up a fourth and four. Since we're in the uh, shout out portion of the broadcast, Lou, I was told before the game by a Clarkstown South parent that his son, currently a freshman in James Madison, KB, met somebody from Yorktown, his current roommate on the club rugby team. And because we were interested in increasing our state of Virginia viewership, we know that there's at least two checking in on this Clarkstown <laughs> South Yorktown <laughs> matchup. It's Borges, fourth down, they go for it, does York dead and complete. Down the sideline, big play for the Huskers. And they pick up a first down, Campanero on the reception. Nice run after the catch, and a good throw by Blake Borges on the run. The mentality of a Yorktown Husker is that when it's my opportunity to perform, I go in and I do my job. And Mike Resigno has instilled in this team and this program to expect greatness, to expect execution. And just because there's a backup quarterback in doesn't mean they're going to give up and not try to put together this comeback. First down play, Borges running the option, flips it outside. Not much there, maybe a yard or so as Campanero carries the football. And he did good to get what he got, Nick Campanero. He put the brakes on when he received the pitch and that allowed him to pick up a yard or so. Yeah, spacing there was a little tough. You could see the difference between a sure Tommy Weaver and Blake Borges in his first complete series here taking the reins of the offense, and still against first-team defenders of Clarkstown South. Second down and eight. Sananai, bottom of the screen, isolated. Smith in motion, here's a throw, downfield, incomplete, intended for Reese Andrews. He was double covered. Clark stops with 9.40 left. It'll be third and eight. Well, Tommy Weaver came out of the game because of his helmet was dislodged. And not to speculate, but he hasn't been in. We'll check defensively the, the next series as Amanda Puglisi is on the scene. But you would think that they're somehow related, precautionary or not. Give it to Smith, breaks outside and is ridden down. Another short pickup on the play and it brings up another fourth down for the Huskers. Yeah. 
two-score game approaching nine minutes to go in opponent territory in a very manageable fourth down with the backup quarterback Blake Borges running the show here for the Huskers trying to avoid a three-game losing streak entering the qualifying round and potentially giving up the opportunity or losing the opportunity to host a game next week. On a fourth down play, Borges in trouble and he goes down. And no chance on that play as Mariah came flying in. Johnny Mariah, the outstanding sophomore linebacker. Mariah coming in. There is pressure this time. And this is Mark that comes in with the big hit. <laughs> Want to make sure we get the right cousin here before we get a <laughs> sternly worded letter from the Mariah family. But a couple of sophomores, couple of cousins playing inside linebacker. You have to imagine all the times that they played those spots growing up together. Incomplete. Intended for Zingaro. Big opportunity here for Clarkstown South. A chance to put this game away, either to put some more points on the board and put the game out of reach or continue to take time off the clock. And if you throw an incomplete pass, the clock stops. You're in control, you're at home. The running game in the second half has been nearly unstoppable. Pound the rock, here's Kyle Walker. Speaking of unstoppable, there's oh, Walker man. down to the 40. I mean, this guy is a highlight reel for a 15 yard run. Just because you know he's gonna earn every inch of it. You know, I went to Iona Prep Stepanak a couple of weeks ago, big come from behind victory for the Gales. And Jamar Edwards, who plays nose tackle, defensive tackle, a former JV running back who got a pick six. And he was so excited that he got to be back in the end zone again. He's not that much bigger than Kyle Walker. And to see Walker with the feet, with the quickness, with the power, put it all together, it's fun to watch a runner like that. Nice defensive play there by Vince Donati, defensive end for Yorktown. Second and one, and going deep down the sideline. It's incomplete. And intended for two check. He almost pulled it in. Just over Reese Andrews in coverage for Yorktown. So a third and nine upcoming for the Vikings. They lead it 20 to seven, looking to go six and oh on the season. Give us to Walker. And he pushes ahead. This time, Yorktown does a nice job to limit the damage. And I'd have to believe that going into that play, they knew it was four down territory. It would be a 52 yard attempt outside of Kabat's range. It's at the 35, so if you kick it into the end zone, it's only a 15 yard difference in field position. With the way the offensive line has gotten a push and all your different options, might as well go for it. On a fourth down play, and Kyle Walker does not pick up the first down, so a good job by the Yorktown defense. Mike Rosigno is not into moral victories, but that's a nice job. You gotta credit Yorktown's defensive line for really coming up with a nice stop there, getting the penetration and bringing down the nearly unstoppable Kyle Walker. Looks like the junior Eddie Capone, linebacker who got in there to make the final stop. So a nice play by the Huskers defense. It's now or never for Yorktown, down a couple of scores, taking over at the 34, under seven minutes to play. Penalty flags fly, and this looks like an illegal participation penalty coming up against the Huskers. 
Maybe too many men on the field. Well, they just substituted one for one. Yep, five yard mark off. It'll be first and 15. Trips go to the left. And again, Borges in at quarterback, fires outside, incomplete. Tender for Dylan Smith. And a Clarkstown South player down. Looks like it could be another cramping issue. Six minutes, 47 seconds left here. In the fourth quarter, the Vikings up 20 to seven. They had a 14-7 lead at the half. And picked up another touchdown here in the second half. Uh, a big running play by Kyle Walker. You know, it's interesting. We really frame this game as Clarkstown South dropping down to Class A. And Yorktown had a similar transition from 2011 to 2012 when they went from double A down to A. And they've been one of the best teams in Class A since then. Somers and Yorktown, each with 52 wins in the last seven seasons. Lords with 50 and Rye with 48. And the reason why we highlight Lords is because they've only been in Class A the last four years. In 2013, or excuse me, 2012, 2013, 2014, they were in Class B, and so a bit of an easier schedule, but in terms of the teams currently in A, these are the leaders, and when you look at these four teams, they account for 10 of the 12 spots in the section final since 2012. Those have been the best four teams in this classification. Borges fires incomplete. Let's check in with Amanda with uh, Coach Scarpelli about his team dropping from double A to A. And he was saying, you know, there's a little bit of that unfamiliar territory. When we were in double A and we were so used to seeing certain teams, we knew what certain teams and what certain coaches were going to do on third down, on fourth down. Here, we didn't know so much, but luckily for him, he says there really wasn't much of a learning curve and his team has really responded well. Clarkstown South in particular lucked out that schools like Spring Valley and Clarkstown North dropped down with them as well. So at least they knew those teams heading into their year. Borges lets it fly and it's caught. Nice catch coming up to make the play is Atherall. Joe Atherall adjusted to the ball nicely, came back to his quarterback and made the catch. So big play for the Huskers brings it across the 45 to the 43. 625 left to the fourth. Borges again, clips it outside. Campanero makes the catch and drives ahead across the 35. This is the drive for Yorktown. This is touchdown or bust at this point, trailing by 13 points, showing some urgency as they run up to the line after the completion. No huddle offense now for the Huskers. And a penalty flag flies. Illegal procedure will be the call on Yorktown. Now remember, they're doing this with their backup quarterback. You have a good look of him there. Six in white, Blake Borges, the sophomore for head coach Mike Resigno. You can see he's upset with that last penalty call. Because not only does it march them back five, but it breaks the momentum of the drive. No question. Mike Resigno, like most football coaches, a bit superstitious. You're going to see those same shorts worn all year long, even in to November, potentially, as things get colder and more crisp. Somehow football coaches and shorts just go together. Second down, nine. Borges looking to throw, steps up, lets it fly, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Zingaro. Joey Zingaro picks it inside the 10, and the Vikings snuff out that Yorktown drive. Second interception for Zingaro. 
looking for Sinanai. It was a good heave. Zingaro just in good position. Sinanai was hoping for a pass a little bit further to lead him towards the goal line. Instead, it's the third takeaway for this Clarkstown South defense. So the Vikings take over deep in their own territory. First and 10 at the 10. Walker makes a nice move and keeps his feet up across the 20 yard line. How about that move, the Juca defender? First down, Vikings at the 21. Five twenty remaining in the fourth. Clarks down south zeroing in on uh, keeping their undefeated season alive. Looking to go six and zero. Oh. Walker breaks into the secondary, still on his feet and barreling over defenders across the forty-yard line. Lou, I, I think we share the opinion that this running attack was a drive too late. They should have gone to it to run the clock on the last one, but their defense came up with the interception. They're in prime position up two scores with under five to go. This is going to be a running attack, I would think, the rest of the way. And we'll keep our eye on the back judge. The hand goes up when there's 10 seconds left on the play clock. He starts counting down visually from five on through. And so Talevi is going to have that target to know when to snap the ball to optimize the play clock. Yeah, they run it right between the tackles again. This time it's Tom. John Tom. No gain on that play. Second down and ten. So you could really see it there. Talevi can see in his vision, the back judge is counting off, marking off the signals. You know you're inside of five minutes or five seconds to go on the play clock, and that's gonna be Talevi's signal to snap the ball in that range. Less than four minutes left now. And the give to Walker. He is dragged down from behind this time. You know, it's interesting. Yorktown has lost a game in each of the last two seasons, but not during the regular season. So they were 9-0 in 2016 going into the finals when they lost to Somers. They were 9-0 going into the finals last year when they beat the Tuskers. So their loss in week four to Somers, 35-21, it turns out it was their first regular season loss in three years. Coincidentally, their last loss was to Somers back on September 25th, 2015. So speaking with Mike Rossigno, he said, we came out of that week and it was a feeling that we had forgotten. We almost didn't know what to do after suffering a regular season loss. Here's John Tom carries it out of bounds. And he should have enough for another Viking first down. Because their loss in 2016 and 2017 ended their season, it was over. He said after that loss against Somers, we had an emergency weekend meeting with the players just to gather everybody together and regroup. And unfortunately for the Huskers, after nearly three years without a regular season loss, they're about to experience their third defeat in as many weeks. Walker breaks a tackle and still plows ahead inside the 45. Down to the 44. Pick up of three, it'll be second and seven as we tick down towards two and a half remaining. I think you're looking at two serious contenders. Clarkstown South at the top of the list. John Jay and Lords both undefeated into this weekend. They're part of the conversation. 
Can't forget about Somers. Can't forget about Rye. Despite their loss to Clarkstown South at home, the Garnets playing in the game this weekend against Harrison, Southern Westchester's best rivalry over the test of time. Walker again has another Viking first down. And here's the thing about Clarkstown South. They returned so many players, including a Kyle Walker and others from last year's team that went seven and three in double A, that lost twice to New Rochelle and Scarsdale. Those were their only blemishes. They're bringing a level of physicality and size that will be really hard to match in class A. And a timeout is called. With a minute 55 left here in the fourth quarter, they had Clarkstown South seemingly on their way to their sixth victory of of the season well next week more great high school football coming your way this time from long island it'll be next saturday september 13th as ward melville takes on william floyd for the patriots and colonials in a great division one matchup that'll be a 2 p.m kickoff on saturday october 13th you can watch it live on Optimum Channel 61, News12Varsity.com, and of course, the News12 Varsity app. And that's still regular season action for Suffolk County. Remember, they culminate in their county championships and the Long Island championships. Thanksgiving weekend, while the rest of New York State gathers at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse for the state championships. So they still got a few more weeks to go, still jockeying for playoff positioning in both Nassau and Suffolk County. For section one, regular season complete. Qualifying round, 16 teams. They'll then reseed the following week for the quarterfinals where the eight teams that remain begin the playoffs officially. Walker again busts into the secondary. Takes it inside the five and takes it in for a touchdown. What a game for that young man. The junior running back, Kyle Walker. Just a punishing runner. Clarks down south last week, got three touchdown tosses from quarterback Drew Talevi. This week, they go a different route. They pound the rock with Kyle Walker, and he delivers three scores. And Kabat is in to kick the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. A minute 45 left in the fourth, and Clarkstown South is out to a 27 to seven lead. You know, last week the offense got slowed down. They scored 28. Tonight they've been in control the whole way with just 27 that's so cool you know just the heart the grit the determination this game is in the bag you can go down on first contact after picking up that first down and apparently he's part of the, part of the orchestra that looked like a first violin move to me <laughs> but it's been sweet music for kyle walker third touchdown and these are not little walk-ins untouched these are, let me take on your entire defensive line, and then I'll challenge your linebackers, and then to cap it off, I'm going to run over your secondary. Now, you know, Walker's done a great job, obviously, once he gets past the line of scrimmage, running over people. But let's give some credit, too, to the Clarkstown South offensive line. They have done an outstanding job at the point of attack here tonight. Now this one in the books, Clarkstown South up by 20. The only question now is the final score. Yorktown just want to finish this game on some positive notes and they'll be pinned back to their own territory here, back inside the 15. Impressive performance tonight by Clarkstown South in what has been a season of impressive performances. They have 
been dominant in most of their games. Yeah, and, and when you really dissect the opponent, Spring Valley the last couple years, a program on the rise, they challenged in double-A a couple of seasons ago. Nyack, a 45 to nothing victory on the road for Clarkstown South against a team that only has one loss. Rye to come from behind on the road to beat the Garnets and Dino Gar shortly after picking up career win number 300. You know, Mike Resigno said, Class A's got great coaching and it's backed up by Tony DiMatteo and Dino Gar and Brian Walsh, the three active winningest coaches in section one, all in class A. Borges picked off. And it's Mariah, Johnny Mariah on the interception. Read it beautifully and stepped in front. Four takeaway for this Clarkstown South defense. A couple of picks from Zingaro, a fumble recovery, and John Mariah. It was Mark earlier with the big hit. This time it's Cousin John with the interception. Sophomore Cousins both contributing defensively in this win for Clarkstown South. And the Vikings now will just take a knee and put this one in the, the win column as they lead it 27 to 7. Well, impressive victory for Clarkstown South and they have lived up to their advanced billing. They really have and they check the boxes in the regular season. It's not just the wins. Yes, they're 6 and 0, they're undefeated, they've taken care of business. But it's the impressive nature of the resume to beat their Rockland County opponents, to take down Clarkstown South in the Supervisors Cup in their arch rivalry game for the third straight year, to beat Rye, to beat Yorktown, to be the new kids on the block coming off of a couple of really strong years, and to not miss a beat from last year. It's now the fifth straight season of at least six wins for Clarkstown South. Andrew Tolevi will take one more knee here. Final 10 seconds. He takes the knee, and that will do it. Clarkstown South, in impressive fashion, goes 6-0 and oh, uh, defeats the defending Section 1 champion Yorktown Huskers by the score of 27-7. to seven. Yorktown is defending the hardware that Clarkstown South wants. It would not be a surprise for in four weeks' time, Lou, if they get to host the trophy that they covet. So the Vikings shaking some hands with the Huskers and Clarkstown South, very impressive, tremendous job, balanced offense tonight. They had the long touchdown pass to R.J. Lamar, but for the most part, it was a punishing running game led by Kyle Walker as he just pounded over this Yorktown defense. We'll be back to talk more about Clarkstown South's big victory in just a few moments. Again, the Vikings win it 27 to seven and more to come here on News 12 Varsity Game of the Week. Back at Clarkstown South where the Vikings and their fans are celebrating a big win over Yorktown by the score of 27 to seven. And time now to take a look at our News 12 Varsity play of the game and there were a lot of plays to choose from I think it really turned at this moment late second quarter Yorktown gets on the board and over the top drew to Levy to RJ Lamar less than a minute after Yorktown finally scores a touchdown Clarkstown South in two plays has the answer and Clarkstown South would not look back. It was part of 20 straight points answering that touchdown scored by the Huskers. 
And Clarkstown South from that point on in control, but to seize momentum right back like that in some ways ended the game, or at least put that squarely in their favor. And Amanda Puglisi standing by with our News 12 Varsity Player of the Game. Amanda? And the player of the game, of course, is the powerful Kyle Walker. Kyle, where does your power come from? I mean, it was a great game both offensively and defensively, but some of those runs really were just outstanding. Um, yeah, I would say it's mostly the weight room. In the offseason, we've been working since March. So I think the weight room every day, getting everybody in there really helps out. Strength and conditioning, all the speed, everything. It was a delayed start today. So as a team, how are you able to kind of keep yourselves warm, keep yourselves ready, and maybe did that delayed start even help you guys? Um, yeah, it happens all throughout the season. We just got to learn to uh, overcome adversity. Like uh, Coach Scarpelli says, we got to overcome and just keep working. It'll, it'll come to us. Coach Scarpelli also says if it was easy, everyone would go 6-0. and So what is it about this team that's so special? Um, the brotherhood, the camaraderie and how our work ethic every day and just something about Clarkstown South football. All right. Well, next up for you guys, it's Pearl River. So what are your thoughts on Pearl River? Um, well, we can't take any team lightly in the playoffs, so we're going to work hard this week, come with the same mindset, same game plan, try and win this game. All right, good luck. Mm, thank you. All right, guys, back to you. All right, Amanda, big game for Kyle Walker, his team rolls to a 27 to 7 victory and more high school football of course coming up over the next two weeks and next week a big game on saturday october 13th at 2 p.m big division one battle in suffolk county on long island as the patriots of ward melville take on the colonials of william floyd you can watch it live on optimum channel 61 news 12 varsity.com and the News 12 Varsity app. That's next week. Tonight, though, it was Clarkstown South rolling to a 6-0 record as they defeat the, the defending Section 1 champion Yorktown Huskers by the score of 27-7. Don't forget to see highlights of this and all the big games in the Tri-State area on the Football Fix Wednesday night. That'll do it here tonight from Clarkstown South High School for David Resnick, Amanda Puglisi, and our entire News 12 varsity team. I'm Lou Grogno. Thanks for joining us. Once again, the final score, Clarkstown South 27, Yorktown 7. The Vikings improved to 6-0 on the season, and they roll into the qualifying round next week.